the name of Jesus. Fall down and strike and read my title clear. I know, I know my name is there. I know, I know my name is written there with contact with that they, uh, they, they hope it's there, they think it's there, but you know the Bible tells us we can know it's there. I don't have, I don't want to doubt about my name being in heaven. Amen? I don't want to doubt about, I mean there's a lot of things I can doubt and I can get by with it, but my name being in heaven can't be one of them things. I want to make sure everything is clean and clear, and I hope and pray that you do the same thing. I ask you to do that because I'm telling you that's why we're here. We're not here just to have a social affair, and I believe I love the social affair. I love getting to know people and getting friends and all that stuff. The family of God, I love that. I thank the world of that, but I praise God for my relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. He empowers me. He equips me. He blesses me. He overcomes. Man, I'm happy. Man. Because I got Jesus. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. I'll tell you, things ain't going well sometimes in my life. My body lets me down. My friends let me down. People that I have high respect let me down. But Jesus, he ain't never let me down. Amen. And I praise Amen. God for that. Don't you? Aren't you happy? Yes. Listen, I know there's a lot of things going on in this whole crazy world. I've been dealing with it half the day, and I, I, my heart breaks for things going on in the world, but I'm so thankful I've got a refuge to this world, and I thank God it's yes. Jesus. He is my friend, my brother, my keeper. He's the lover of my soul. He lifts me up, and I got a hush because I'm going to start preaching. <laughs> We thank the Lord for each and every one of you. It seems like forever since I've been in church. I don't know. I tell you, sometimes people think, you know, we have one service a week. I don't think I ever would want to do that. I thought about that. I'll be honest. There's all kinds of churches that have one service a week or two services a week. I miss you when I don't see you. I know that don't make much difference to you, but it makes a difference to me. I miss you when I don't see you, and I'm glad you're here this evening. One announcement before I forget that we are going or the youth, youth are going on an ARC Encounter outing on February the 11th, and it'll be, um, they're going to be leaving the church at 8.30 a.m., and you uh, can, must be registered 21 days in advance to qualify the group rate they're getting, and the group rate is going to be, you need to see Sister Crystal. She set all this up, and I really appreciate her doing it. Our youth was going to be free, by the way. So our youth of the church is going to be free. That's amazing. And I, they need to go. That is a tremendous place for those kids to go. And for the adults. We've been there once and we loved it. We thank the world. And so the group rate tickets for the adults um, is $60.94. And that includes, though, the full out buffet at the restaurant there. And that is a really good buffet. So if you want to go, please let her know. A senior's rate. I don't know where that starts. I'm hoping it starts at 53. <laughs> but I doubt it. But a senior's rate is 60, or excuse me, $52.94, and that also includes the buffet at the, at the Ark, which again, honestly, is a very good, I thought was an outstanding buffet. It's a wonderful place to go. If you've not been, you need to get hooked up with Sister Crystal, let her know that you want to go, 
And uh, if you have been, you might want to go back and be with them. And I'm sure they'll need all the help they can get with all these young ones. So I, I want them to go. It's going to be a great experience. We're going to go to the Lord in prayer here as we typically do. I want you to continue to please be praying for Brother Danny Watkins. He's going to have a procedure on Friday. Uh, my wife was on the phone with Becky today for quite extensive time, and, and uh, they need a lot of prayer. So we just ask you to keep Sister, uh, or excuse me, Brother Danny and Sister Becky Watkins in your prayers. I ask you to keep Sister Mary Spencer in your prayers. She is in uh, rehab. Uh, I can't say the name. It's old Bet or something. Now, uh, it starts with an O, ends with an N, and there's a whole lot of letters in between those two numbers. There you go, water bottom, that's it. That's where she's at. See, that's a fun game. We're going to have to do that one more often. <laughs> Otter bottom, she's there for rehab for at least a week or so, probably two, but she's not feeling uh, up to speed yet. She's doing better, but it took a lot out of her. Of course, she had COVID and stuff, and uh, she's 91 years old. And so she, we really need you to be praying for her. Please continue to pray for her. Brother Gary, how's Sister, uh, how's Sister Wanda doing? She's better, but she's just tired all the time. All right. Let's keep Sister Wanda brush and Brother Gary as well in our prayers. We appreciate that so much, too. Someone else got a prayer. We also need to continue to remember Brother John continually. Keep him in prayers and Sister Mary uh, Tipton. Keep her in your prayers as well. Someone else got a prayer request this evening. Tell me her name again. Connie. Connie. All right. Let's remember Connie in our prayers. She's going through a lot, sounds like. Yes, yeah, Sister Kathy. Um, continue to remember Andrea. They told her in the hospital that her kidneys have completely quit functioning. She's been on dialysis, but her kidneys did function some. And they told her now that they just completely quit. And she All right. was kind of discouraged. But they also told her they, sur they were surprised that they hadn't quit a long time ago. A long time ago, sure, yeah. We've been hearing, I've been hearing from Andrea too, staying in touch with her. So please keep Sister Andrea in prayers as you heard. Her kidneys, they said, is completely quit functioning. She is out of the hospital, but she's uh, need a lot of prayer. Brother Byron? I'd like to put in a prayer request for this friend of mine, uh, In the, yeah. uh, that's been on the news yeah. that they beat up. Yeah. The sweetest man you would ever want to yes. meet. Bless his heart. Remember this. Pete, Pete. and his 94 years old, was broke into and, and they captured him. It's just a terrible situation. Yeah. So remember this, man, dear man, is Hopefully in your know. prayers. Someone else got a prayer. Yes, Brother Dave. I just found out today that my only sister that lives in Richmond, Virginia, had a stroke. Mm. All right. Let's, 
Alma. Let's remember Alma. Yes. Just all my children, please, for salvation. Obviously. Yes, let's remember Charlene's children. Yes, Sister mm -hmm. Bills. Remember, tell me, Nikki? Nikki. Nikki, let's remember Nikki in your prayers. Rob? Um, your brother, what's your brother's name? Phil? Okay, so his brother all Phil, you know Phil. He's mm -hmm. been here so. His dad was around the corner from me. Okay. And he had a stroke a while back, so he's been better right now. I mean, the stroke. Bed ridden, can't do nothing. Right. Squad pulled up the other day, took him to the hospital. Somehow he got COVID so bad. Mm. It's got to be from one of the nurses or something to come in here to help him. Sure. You know his name, Frank? His name's Marcel, and I, I just got to talk with my brother. Look at Frank's name, Kelly. He's in the Lauren Dale. Lauren Dale. Let's remember this in our prayers, please. Let's continue to remember Frank's mom and dad as well. Thank you, Ron. Yes, Lisa. Yeah, I remember my grandma Bernice Grant and my parents that are taking care of her. Yes, let's remember Lisa's grandma Bernice and her her parents. Let's remember Sister Vicky and her parents as well. All right. We're very. Lisa's friend uh, and Willis' friend, Sherry Martin, she, uh, her husband's going in for surgery tomorrow. She went out to Westbrook. All right. Let's remember this in our prayers. I've heard from Sister Gail Hall. She had surgery here a few days ago, and she's recovering, doing pretty good, but still got a little way still with recovery. So please remember Sister Gail in your prayers. Yes. Fred and Max. All right. Let's remember those. Fred and Max. Anyone else? A lot of serious needs going on in there. How many of you got lost loved ones in your, in your family, friends, neighbors? You know, there's a lot of things going on in the world, and I, I wish I could explain them all to you, and I wish you could explain them to me. <laughs> but let's face it, we don't have all the answers, but we have the answer. I don't know all the whys, <clears throat> but I know the one that can fix all the whys all the situations we're in battle with. And it seems like, seems like this world gets more wicked every day. And, and the more I try to hide and stay away from things and get out of the news and get out of just the mainstream of things, it seems like it just starts invading. Yes. I know you don't know what I'm talking about. Believe me, I know what I'm talking about. People's lives and families and churches are destroyed because of sin. I want you to pray for you. Because if you don't know it by now, there's a real devil. And he wants to take you out of this world. And not take you out to go to heaven. He wants to destroy you while you're here. He wants to destroy your reputation. He wants to destroy your name. He wants to destroy your family and anything else that he can handle. He wants to take you out. I want you to pray. I want you to seek God's face like you never have before. I want you to get more serious about this thing. We're about to hit a new year, and I'm telling you, I am fired up. I'm angry at the devil. I'm sad at the situations I see and hear and I'm involved with, the people I know that I love and care about. I'm telling you, whether you realize it, whether you see it, whether you want to see it, don't stick your head in the sand. It's happening. And we need to be serious about prayer because the only hope we have in this world is our God. For any of you who think there's any other hope, you're, you're sadly 
and miserably mistaken. Amen. We're going to go to the Lord in prayer. I know there's a lot of other prayer requests on our list. God knows each and every one. Father, we come to you this evening. Lord, I, I, wish, I wish I could fix everything. I wish I could take care of the situations. I wish I could heal hearts and lives and families and churches. But the more I try to fix, the worse it becomes. But the more, the more that you get involved, Lord, miracles happen. Yeah. Lives are changed and souls are saved. The longer I think, Father, that situations are going to work out, Lord, it seems like it gets harder and worse all the time. It seems like people's <coughs> hearts getting harder yeah. and farther away from you. Lord, sometimes we pray and we seek your face, but when we don't see the results and we don't hear the things that you are doing, then God, we sometimes, let's face it, Father, we are weak in our faith. I'm asking you, God, and humbly as I know how, use our hearts, use our lives. Put a hedge around us, Lord, that Satan cannot penetrate. Let's each and every individual, each and every family that's here and within the sound of my voice within this church, we ask God that you might protect them. Hold them close to your bosom. Sin is bombarding their lives and trying to destroy them from the inside out. Help us, Father, to be sincere, honest, driven to do your will. God, we love you. The only hope of this church or any church like it is yes. your Holy Spirit moving within our souls. Speak to us tonight. Speak to us straight from heaven. Let your spirit just penetrate to the very depths of our hearts. Let us feel your presence like we haven't in some time. God, we need you. Well, thank you for all that you do for each of these prayer requests, situations that we've heard tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I apologize for my lot going on. Don't worry, it's not with me or anybody here. But it's people I love and care about and cherish with all my heart. I've seen sin devour people. Yeah. And destroy people. Too many times. And it rips my heart. People that you know, knows better, can do better, but somewhere along the line, they just sway just a little bit. They just get away from the, just the center of God's will, just enough that he knows who and what and when to use whatever that it is. My intentions this evening is to teach at least, talk a little bit from 1 John chapter 1. I can't tell you what I know right now, and I don't know if I'll ever tell you. There's something very, 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 very sad going on right now as I'm speaking. And I'm asking you as the people of God to pray. And I mean pray diligently. 
So souls are at stake. Families and lives are at stake right now. Warfare is going on right this moment. Yes. <laughs> Sometimes we don't see it, really. We see it afar. We see it off in the distance. When it comes at your front door, it becomes real, real to your soul. Amen. I want you to, not only today, but throughout this week, there's going to be things that go on that need to happen, but it's going to be difficult. I love you and I cherish your prayers. And I pray that you will be praying for others that you don't even know who you're praying for right now, but God does. That's as far as I can go with it. 1 John chapter 1. Verse 1 says this, That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon, and our hands have handled of the word of life. For the life was manifested, and we have seen it, and bear witness, and show unto you that eternal life, which was with the Father and was manifested unto us. Amen. That which we have seen and heard declare, declare unto you, that you also may have fellowship with us. And truly our fellowship is with the Father and with His Son, Jesus Christ. And these things write we unto you, that your joy may be full. And this great word that we heard from 1 John, and I've got an intention, at least at this point in life, to go through the book of 1 John. And 1 John is not a very long book, but it's a very relevant and very potent book. If you've not read through 1 John, you need to. It's a book that gives you a lot of answers, and real quick. You might think in college we used to, they said, read a book. And it was, you know, a big novel, and I'm supposed to read it in two weeks. And I'm not a reader. I don't like just to read to read. I want to read to know something, what I need to get of it. I, I put up two fans for my wife yesterday, seating fans, and it absolutely killed me. The second one, I told my wife as I pulled open all the box and got all the pieces out and laid them out on the bed, I said, there is one engineer that needs to be fired right here. <laughs> there was way too many pieces for a stinking ceiling fan that you put up in the air. And I put a lot of ceiling fans up, and this one had, I said, this guy needs to be fired. I could have done a better job of designing this. It had way too many pieces. And I didn't even want to read the instructions in, so I looked at the pictures. <laughs> Just because I had to know which they, all these pieces went to and where they went. I hate doing that. But this, if you will, was a kind of a synopsis. And that's what I used to read even in, the, in college when I'd have to read this big book. And they'd say, read this book and you're going to, you know, you'll study it and know it and this and that. So I'd read the little synopsis and all it was was a little bitty book about a, a, not even a quarter of what the other one was. I loved it because it gives you all the important things real quick. That's my kind of book. And First John is that kind of book. It tells you the important things really quick. It just gives you the highlights and the necess necess necessary things that you and I need to know and not only know. And this is something I'm scared of for a lot of folks in church anymore. They'll come in even on a Sunday morning and they'll listen to a sermon and, you know, I'll make them laugh sometimes or I'll make them cry sometimes just because of the words that I'll share with you. And sometimes they'll think, oh, wow, that's pretty neat. And, They'll think of it for a few moments, but then when they walk out the door, I'll be honest with you, sometimes I feel like I'm just speaking to the wind. I know you don't understand that because you're great folks and you're here and you're, I'm speaking to the choir, but sometimes it feels like you're just speaking words and it's almost like it's almost useless because people go out and they're going to live how they want to live no matter what you say. Now, I know that for a fact. I've got two daughters, you know, and I've raised those daughters, and sometimes we've had sit-down, heart-to-heart talks, and boy, I'm tearing up, crying. There's one thing that I'll cry over, that's my kids, and I got so tore up over it, and I'm crying, and I'm, I'm just brokenhearted, whatever we was going through at the time, and I'll let them know as best that God would give it to me, some wisdom that I was trying to place into them, 
And then I would go away and I'm thinking, I don't even know if they get it. They don't feel the weight of it. They don't know. They're getting it now because they got kids. Hello? You know what I'm saying? They didn't get it then, but they're getting it now. And I hope and something clicks in their head and says, hey, I remember what Dad said in that situation. John, the Re John was here, not John the Revelator, but John, the son of Zebedee, was speaking. At least that's what, who is accredited to the first of John. That's who they think wrote this. And he was writing to the church. And then during this particular time of the church's life, 1 John was written because the letters of John were written in the last period of the church where the church was uh, faced with large issues of the chosen 12 is where John came from, but of organizing the church and getting it united in the midst of a lot of persecution. That sounds like me today. I, honestly, the church of today is so divided. I, I see... We're supposed to be the church of God, okay? And, and so many times I see us kind of united in some ways, but more, more times than not, we are so divided. Yeah. I don't understand why. I'll be honest with you. I've searched that question many times. I've asked a lot of people that's above me, been in ministry longer than I have, and I've wondered, why is the church so divided today? Why, why aren't we working together? Why are we fighting together? Why are we uniting arms together and start battling together so we can accomplish so much more than trying to say, here's my little group and here's another little group and there's another. Why don't we come together in love and unity and, and in God? We're supposed to be Christians fighting the same battle, doing the same work for the same God. With the same purpose and the same unity and the same heart. It's no wonder I, be honest, I'm just, I, feel, I don't know, I've been going through something this week, and I can't explain. I, my wife's asked me all week long, you okay, you okay, you okay? And I, I, I don't know if I'm okay. I'm just still here. But I, I, just, I just feel there's something going on in me, a brokenness that I haven't felt in a while, just a heaviness that I can't explain, uh, depth that sometimes it makes me, I was watching, We've been watching some, I've been watching some movies on Pure Flix. She'll sit down sometimes, and as I'm watching, of course, I've got my laptop, and I've got to do two or three things, because I'm ADD, and I can't do one thing at once. They're so just who I am. And I watch these movies, and they're pretty good. There are some really good ones. I can give you a list sometime if you want it, but some amazing movies. That really, but I'm crying. Now, naturally, I'm a man, so I don't let my wife see me cry. But I never cry. This week I've been so emotional and I, I'm just crying. Sometimes I shouldn't even be crying. I'm just that their tears are falling. And I'm wondering what in the world, and I'm searching my own, what's, what's going on with you? And I, my wife loves me more than anybody in the world probably. And, sorry, Mom. <laughs> <laughs> And she says, What's, are you okay? And I have to say, yeah, because I don't know how to explain what I'm going through. And sometimes maybe you've been there. Mm -hmm. uh, I just, I, I feel for you. Sometimes you don't understand what you're dealing with, why you're dealing with what you're dealing with, how you're dealing with it. You just know inside there's something just not clicking. It's just not working. There's... Just don't feel that joy and speakable and full of glory that I have talked to you about many times. Not that I'm sad. It's just that I don't have that power of joy like I sometimes do. And I'll sit there and I'll watch this movie and I'll see a little boy that's been beaten and I'm crying. It's a movie. I know it's a movie. I've told my daughters, my, mom, my wife, and my son a million times, it's a movie. Why are you getting scared? It's a movie. Why are you crying? It's a movie. I'm crying. And it's still a movie. Sometimes we've got to draw back, don't we? I begin to think about this thing, and as I'm going through the week, and I, I just think, as a father, as a husband, as a pastor, as just a person. I feel the heaviness of the world. 
on you. And then I get, I get some calls today. And man, if it didn't smack me in the face. Now I know why I felt the heaviness before the heaviness got there. Some of you understand and some of you ain't yet, but I hope you don't anytime soon. You knew there was a wave coming, you just didn't know it was, what was coming. And then all of a sudden it just, boom, there it is. It's almost as if God was preparing me for what is yet to come. Again, looking at this verse, these four verses, John, the son of Zebedee, was a great evangelist. At least that's who they credit for writing this. Most credit for writing this. They were going through a time in the church where it was very difficult to unify the church, to get them together and love one another, pray for one another, care for one another. The Roman soldiers were coming against the church terribly. They were embattling the church in every way, shape, or form. They were trying to crucify, if you will, the church. They wanted to destroy the church. The church was their enemy. And listen, when you got Roman soldiers after you, honey, that's the worst thing in the world at that particular time that you could ever have. I feel that in the church of today. People that go to church each and every day. People that love God. People sincere. Now, I'm not talking about this fake church. And, and let me just, just kind of describe this quickly, very quickly. I don't got time to mess with all that. But there's a real church and then there's a fake church. All right? There's a church that's sincere, that loves God, that's living for God, that really wants God's will in their life and really wants to do God's will. There's a people that really care about who God is and what God's doing and what God wants out of them. And there's a people that's really sacrificing themselves for God's cause. But then there's a people, and I'll be honest with you, there's some people that can be in the same church on the same pew with you. And we can have all different flavors. There's some people that just want to come to church to say, well, we know we're supposed to be at church, and well, we're going to be at church, or it's a social affair, we just like to come to church. Oh, we know it's what we're supposed to do. Let me tell you something. That's religion. That's not real. That's not anything. That's not going to get you off the block, let alone get you to heaven. That's not going to be pleasing to you or to God. That's one dear amazing pastor years ago he's dead and gone probably he's gone to glory now but he once told a church his church i've said this probably before here but he told his church one time and i, I listened to it on a uh, cassette tape he told his whole congregation he had a, like a thousand people at that time it was a big church he said i wish a whole bunch of you would go get drunk <laughs> and they were like like you are right now what he said that way you would know where you're really at before God and quit playing games with God. In other words, he was trying to say, we need to get real. We need to figure out where we're at and who we are before an almighty God because we can't play games with God. As I began studying this verse, I began looking at it and I started thinking about what John was saying here. And in the first verse, he says, that which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon, and our hands have handled of the word of life. So my first thought was, is who is God? And naturally, as a pastor, I started theologically trying to think of a statement. And I've already done that uh, sometime back when I went through some class that I dealt with. And I started to listen just a small portion of this. God is holy. And he has made it obvious that he desires humanity to be holy. 1 Peter 1, 15 and 16 clearly describes that. God is omniscient in that he knows at the end before the beginning he is constant, even though he has a sovereignty to be able to change his mind according to his purpose and to the influence of the prayers of the saints. 
God is omnipotent, which is displayed in multiple ways, including through vastness and variableness of creation. God is able to do all things without reservations or limitations. God is omnipresent and exists everywhere, all the time. Yeah. That was kind of my short but pointed theological statement that I've made of who God is. It's almost impossible to describe God, isn't it? I mean, try for a moment to describe who really God is and what he is and all this. And we can get into the Bible and start using words that the Bible shares with us. But let me ask you something. I started describing just in a short paragraph, and there's no way I can describe God in a short paragraph. But can I ask you something? First of all, do you know who God is? I mean this, and I want you to really, I want you to think about this. I want you to feel this. I want you to know this, because if you really, I'm not talking about what you hear or what somebody else has told you or, or something that you just, you know, think you ought to say. I mean, do you personally know God and who he is? If you really think about that for a, a while, let me tell you something. That's a big thought. I can get into scriptures, and I have, and I'm sure you have, and I hope you have, and I hope you, if you didn't, you're going to now. But I hope you get into scriptures, you discover fully, from Genesis to Revelation, who God really is. Because a lot of people have a mis, misidentification, if you will of a description of who God is. Somebody, some people in this world think that God is simply a big daddy that loves everybody and you can do anything and act any way and you're going to be all right because God loves everybody. And if you think I'm just making that up, that is not made up. That has absolutely been taught many, many places. In fact, most places in more. Now, do not get me wrong and keep listening to me, Facebook YouTubers. Keep listening to me for a minute. He is love. The Bible clearly and plainly teaches us that God is love. And God does care about people, everyone. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten. So not only is he love, he is giving and forgiving. And God has a lot of qualities that many of us need to learn, but God is also a God of anger. <clears throat> And we need to learn that. We need to understand that and we need to live like we understand that. Some of us are too loose with our lives. Well, God loves me anyway. You're right, but he ain't pleased with you. He ain't happy with you right now. Listen, I have, there has not been one day in my life that I have not absolutely 100% without a shadow of a doubt or even fear no favor loved my daughters. And I'm using them because they're adults now. <laughs> and I'm using them because I'm going to take them down a few notches right here in a minute. Plus, I feel like I weigh on Jake way too much. I'm giving him a break tonight. I love them no matter what. But can I tell you something? Them two girls have felt like they have ripped my heart out, broken it in a million pieces, thrown it on the ground, and stomped on it. <laughs> and that's putting them out. But even during those moments, my love never wavered. Amen. It never once stopped or even paused. My love was still there, even though I wanted to choke them. <laughs> Beat them half to the death, I still loved it. Amen. Sometimes you and I push the limits with God. Oh, I know we're holier than thou. I know we got angels, wings, and Halos that we checked at the door. I understand all that stuff that you think about yourself. But I got news for you. Sometimes we break God's heart. There's days and moments and decisions and situations that we have absolutely broken 
God's heart. But God still loves you. Even though he feels like choking. You understand that? That's a small synopsis, if you will, of who God is. I want you to know God. I don't want you to know just a church. I don't want you to just to know a religion. I don't want you to know a form of religion. I want you to know God. Because if you don't know God personally, intimately, I want you to listen to how John describes it. Put up, is that verse one? Yeah. He says, we have heard, we have seen, we have eyes that have seen, we, we looked upon him, and our hands have handled. Do you know what he's telling me? Now, that was over 2,000 years, but you know what it says to me? We ought to have a working relationship with God. Not one that he's calling in the orders from a long way off, but he's one that's right here. I'm touching him. I'm looking at him. I'm watching him. He is working on me intimately, physically, emotionally, spiritually. And he's changing who I am. Yeah. Amen. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. He's not a God up there on the throne sometimes looking down and just hoping he's there. No, no. He's right here. John felt that, he seen that, he handled that, he looked at that, he was a part of that, and you are too, as much as John. Oh, you say, I can't see Jesus. Oh, I'm seeing Jesus all over the place. Jesus is still working on me, and I pray to God he's still working on you. In fact, I see Jesus in you a lot of times. You see, he is as real today as he's ever been. God is still real to us. And so when I'm sitting here looking at these verses and I'm thinking about what he's saying, I first of all ask, who is God? But then I start thinking on this second part of this verse part of it is this. And I want you to really consider this. First of all, who is God? Something that's unchangeable, something you can't do nothing about. He's going to be him no matter who you, what you think of him. Whether you deny him or you accept him, he's going to be God. But then I want to ask you this. And this is as important as the first one, I believe, is who is God to you? It's one thing to know a celestial being, a spiritual body, a person that's up there somewhere. But it's uh, something else to know him and know him personally. Who is God to you? How has God affected your life? If you'll forgive me the way of terminology, but how has God infected your life? How has he got inside of you and changed your heart? How is your relationship with him on a daily basis? Now, I can give you all the right answers and tell you exactly what we're supposed to say. You know, you're supposed to read and pray and all this. But let's, let's just ask, how is that for you? If you don't read and pray and seek God's face, if you don't have a relationship with him on a daily basis, Friend, your relationship's not near as good as you think it is. I don't know how you all do, but sometimes when I get aggravated at my wife, I know. You say, how can you get aggravated at a perfect woman? I don't know. <laughs> that just shows how honorary I am, I guess. But I'm the kind of person, when I get aggravated at her, I don't want to talk. I don't want to work it out. I want to discuss it. I don't want to think about it. I don't want her to ask me what's wrong or what's right, what's good, what's bad. I don't want to hear nothing. I just want to simmer. <laughs> I got any simmerers in here? <laughs> Y'all <are> chicken. <laughs> there you go. Got a couple of them. Simmerers. In other words, I just want to simmer and get over it myself. When I'm over it, we'll be all right. Till I'm over it, Leave me alone. I don't want to talk about it. I have no idea where I was going with that. <laughs> I'm simmering right now. <laughs> oh, gracious. We need to know. Oh, I know where it's going. It hit me. I sat back in the same place I was a while ago, and I remembered. Ain't that crazy how that works, Don? You ever had that happen to them? Yeah. 
Some of us almost look like we're mad at God. Because we don't talk to him. We're almost like we're simmering. We're almost like we're just saying, man, I'm going to say it right now. I'm just we need to open our hearts, our spirits, our lives. We need to have an open communication with God. Amen. Let me just tell you something as you go th through this path. And I pray to God that you'll listen to me and you'll do at least a little bit of this. And I hope, I hope and pray that this is a not, not a message that I'm just speaking to the wind. And you're going to go out and do with your own thing. So, well, that was nice. Or, you, gosh, I'm glad that was over. I don't care how you think about it at this point. I'm just, I'm getting too old, I'm too, too ornery, and I'm getting just too codgery to just care about what people are thinking when I'm preaching. I just want to preach, and whatever they think, I'm okay with that. I'm getting past the years of, oh, I hope they like me. I do hope you like me, but if you don't, get over it. I'm not going anywhere anytime soon, okay? So get over it. Bless your loving, pee picking heart. I'm sorry, honey, I said it. Tennessee we need yep. to learn to develop a relationship with God. Amen. So when I ask you the question, who is God to you? That means I ask you, what does he mean to you? And if you tell me I love him more than anything else in this world, then you ought to have some relevant and real ways that you can prove that you love him more than anything else in this world. If I tell my wife I love you more than anybody, but I spend more time with everybody but her. If I tell my wife I love her more than anybody, but I speak to everybody and I'm simmering with her. Hello? Are you understanding? You see, too many times we can talk big talk. That when our lives really come down to it, our step-by-step -step reality is not meeting what we're wanting to think about ourselves. We want to say we love God with all our heart, but yet too many times we hear prayer requests and we don't hit our knees, we don't close our eyes, and we definitely don't pray to God. You say, now what's that got to me of me loving God with, more my, uh, with all my heart? Here's what it is. It's because the God said, when somebody else is broken, then I'm broken. When somebody else is going through pain, then I'm going through pain. When somebody else is hurting, then I want to hurt. Because they're my brothers and my sisters. They're, they're, they're people. They're God loves and cares about his, his creation. And when he's hurt, then I want to be hurt. You and I need to have the passion and, and the fervor and the love of God in us. And if you don't, if you don't, then I'm telling you, your relationship's not where you think it is. So when I ask you, who is God to you? That means how much of God do you have? That means, that means how do you reflect God? Sometimes when I was growing up, my, my different people would say, you're like your dad. My dad's name is Donald Curtis. I'm Donald Curtis. And sometimes, sometimes my attitude or my ways or what I do or how I do it, we reflect, we, we, um, I grew up under that. I learned that. That's what I learned and it was developed under that, you know? And so that's what you become in some ways. Now, some ways you can shape your own self later, but you, you're developed under that. Good or bad or indifferent, it's who you become. We need to be developed in the image of God, in the power of God, in the development of God. We need to become more like God. We need to know who God is to us. And if God is not your predominant force, that's shaping you and molding you and making you change every day, then you need to get closer to God. Amen. Who is God to you? He needs to be the very first and foremost thing in your mind, your heart, and your spirit, your marriage, your finances, and everything you are. You need to have God premier in your mind. When you say, I love God, and you treat your wife like a dog, 
When you say you love God, you beat your kids. Yep. When you say you love God, you act like the devil is at the workplace. When you say you love God and you're acting as bad as the world is, let me tell you something. When you say you love God, you can't even get in his word. You're scared to speak his name. So when I ask you who is God to you, you need to be real. Because I'll be honest with you, God already knows the answer. He already knows what your relationship is. You can fool, you can fool me all you want, but I'm telling you, God, he knows you. And one day you're going to be judged upon the very things that he knows about you. Not what you want him to think, but what he knows about you. Amen. Who is God to you? And then I began reading a little farther. And I thought the first step, of course, is to know who we serve. Who is God to us and who is God? And the second step, I think, in this scripture, even the first four verses, it says, is to have a personal ongoing attraction or interaction with God. Yeah. Listen to what it says. He heard, he seen, he looked, he handled the word of life. How do you, can I ask you this, and I want you to listen. You don't have to answer me. Please don't answer. I don't have time for it. But how do you, how do you interact with God? How do you interact with God? What, what, how do you and God get along? How do you, how, what's your dance look like? How's your communication? Listen, I'm not trying to be judgmental, hateful. I'm just asking a few questions because I've already went through these questions myself. And I'll tell you what, I've, I've been praying. And I'll be honest with you, I'm not a perfect on any of this either. I just want to get closer to God. I want to be someplace where God wants me to be and where God can use me and teach, develop me and, and use me to help somebody else and get me to heaven one day. I want to be the person that God wants me to be. Don't you? Yes. yes. And so my question to us today, and be real, I'm just being real with you, this is the questions that I had that hit my mind and my heart. As I'm studying this and I'm, I'm looking, I didn't get this off the internet. I didn't get this off somebody else's page. This is straight from heaven. So I want you to listen. Please listen to me. How do you interact with God? I started thinking about that and I started thinking about how I could talk to God and then also how I could read about God and how I could pray with God. But then I started thinking, is that all there is? And then I, no, it's not even close. You see, when he says in the scriptures, in the New Testament, he says, when you do it to the least of these, you, it's as if you did it to sometimes interacting with God means interacting with each other. It means that if I can't love you who I can see, then how can I say that I love God who I can't see? Amen. Amen. It means that I ought to have a passion and compassion for the people around me that's less fortunate than me, that's on the streets right now, that's who knows how they made it through the last few days. That's right. Without a home on the streets. Can you imagine? As it got so below zero the other day, and I started, my mind was thinking, how in the world? And you know, they're everywhere. We're from Powell County, Kentucky. It's a hick town. I'll admit, it's a hick town in the middle of Kentucky, eastern part of Kentucky. And we, in the hick town of Powell County, Kentucky, have homeless people sleeping under bridges. That blows my mind. I could only imagine how many people in our area right here at sub below zero are sleeping under car buildings. I'll be honest with you, I hard, had a hard time enjoying Christmas thinking about God's children. You say that they've done it to themselves. They're drug addicts, they're alcoholics, they're, they've done their most, listen, I don't care. The first one of you that has not sinned and done wrong, go ahead and stand up and let's, let's praise you. The first one that has not sinned in their past and does mess your life up, something miserable, if it wasn't for the faith and the, and the grace and the mercy and forgiveness of God, you would have been there or worse. Amen. You see, God wants us to be more like him. And how do you become more like him? It's to interact with him. It's to know who he is. Yeah. 
There's this thing that people say all the time when you, people are married for a long time. They can finish each other's sentences, right? My wife finishes my sentences. It's just not what I want to say. <laughs> it's what she wants me to say. <laughs> so we do pretty good. Just she talks, and then it messes my sentence all up. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Sorry. Sometimes. Not really at all. <laughs> when you and I live with Jesus, talk to Jesus, walk with Jesus, interact with Jesus, we become more and more and more like him. Yes. Amen. We've got to get serious about this. We have no time to waste. There's a lot of lives that's suffering. There's a lot of family members that need Jesus. Yes. There's a lot of people that come in this church that need to see the real love of Jesus. We need to know who he is. And we need to know him. Here's the questions I had on the interacting with Jesus. First, how do you interact with God? And second, how does God interact with you? Some people say, well, I pray, I pray, I pray. Well, you know, there's a lot of people that just love to talk. Yeah. This just, they'll, they'll pray all the time. Lord, we need this. God, we need to fix this. God, fix that. God, Lord, help that. Lord, you just don't understand all these people I have to deal with. But Lord, I'm going to do it because I'm, and they're like a run-on sentence. It's about a mile long. If you was going to college, you would have an F because a run-on sentence. There ain't a period, there ain't a comma, there ain't a pause, there ain't nothing. No, you need a little breath in between. Listen, God's not looking. He knows the issues. God wants to, you to hear from him sometimes. See, interaction, communication is always not one way. Unless you're on a motorcycle with my wife behind me, then it's one way. I can't understand what she's saying, and she don't, I don't have, I'm just happy in my little silent world, and she thinks I can hear every word I'm saying. She's saying, it's wonderful. But that's not how our communication with God is supposed to be. We're supposed to be not only talking to him, but also listening to him. And as we're listening, we also need to hear from him from the word. And if you don't have that word open, then you can't hear what he's saying because you're deaf. Amen. So I started thinking about the three questions. How did you interact, interact with God? And then how does God interact with you? And in other words, let me ask you a little bit. I got to hurry because I know it's late. Almost. Does God ever speak to you? Now, I know that you don't hear this, hello, <laughs> this is God. I, I get that. I'm not saying that. But have you ever really and, and sincerely, on a regular basis even, been impressed by God to speak to you, to say, hey, you need to do this. You need to do that. You need, don't go there. Stop. Hit the brakes or something to hit. Something in your life. Does God speak to you? Does he interact in your life? Does he ever say, hey, shut your mouth. You're about to mess up. Yes. Hello? Amen. Some of you are guilty on that when I say I won't tell. <laughs> Many people. <laughs> but sometimes we got to ask ourselves, is God interacting with me? Because if it's only one way, then that is not a relationship. <laughs> That's a monotony. That's a monopoly. That's one way. That is you in control of everything, and he is not interacting or in control of anything. That is not a relationship. That is abuse. But it's not a relationship. If I control, some people think, they used to, they learned quickly, that was not true. But they used to think sometimes, I don't know why, but they think, I was in control of my wife. <laughs> Honey, you just got to be around her a little bit. And you realize that is not, oh, I know what it was. It was in Pennsylvania. I was preaching a camp meeting in Pennsylvania. Great. We had a good camp meeting. And my wife, we was at dinner, you know, at lunch or whatever. And, and she would just come over. She'd pick my plate up after I'm done. And she would go and take it up. Or she'd bring my plate to me. And I'm just sitting here talking to people. And she just does it. And I don't even pay attention. And it doesn't. And some guy says, can you teach a class? <laughs> <laughs> and she looks at him like, about what? He said, can you teach all these other whiteys? Look at his wife. 
And he said, can you teach all these other wives how to do that? She said, do what? To serve your husband. <laughs> well, first of all, my wife does it because she wants to, not because she has to. She don't do it out of servitude or because I make her. She does it because she loves me, and that's one way she wants to show me she loves me. Can I ask you something? How many times do we do things for God's sake? Not because we have to, but because we want to. Amen. Because we just want to show him that we love you, that we care about you, that we not only care about you, but we care about your people. Some people say, well, I've got to pray if I'm going to give this guy money. <laughs> he's starving, he's homeless, he's sitting on the street corner with begging for money. You're right, you shouldn't give him a penny. Jesus wouldn't. Really? Does it take 20 minutes to figure that out? Does it take a green light to figure that one out? I'm not saying give all your money to every guy that's standing on the roadsides. But sometimes we need to do what Jesus would do, and we would be more better at that if we were interacting with him on a more regular basis. Do you agree with that? Amen. So the third question on that one is, first, how do you interact? Second, how does God interact with you? And then how do we share God with others? Because if you're interacting with God and God's interacting with you, we're going to love other people. Amen. That's an automatic. It will not make you struggle, strain. It won't give you a hernia. I promise. It will just be something you do because of who you are, because whose you are. If you love God and God loves you and you all are interacting all the time, you're going to do the power and the will and the mercy of God. And that means you will do God's will and not yours. Amen. Amen. That's right. So why did I bring all this out? Here's why. Because that fourth verse, and it says, And these things write we unto you, that your joy may be full. Friend, I got news for you. If your joy ain't full, maybe you're missing one of these elements that I just talked about. I wrote this. I wrote this. To know who God is and to know that God loves you unconditionally and to know that God wants to continually have a walking, talking relationship with you brings us joy to the fullest. Yeah. If you know that, and then I go on to say, to know that God can do anything you need should bring joy because you know you're in contact and connection with God and that means you have joy because he can handle whatever you're going through. Yes. Amen. And then I go on to say, to know that he can and will forgive you. Amen. Gracious sakes so. That ought to bring the greatest joy you've ever had in your life. To know that you are unworthy, you were a mess, you were sinful, you have messed up, you made wrong decisions, you committed sin, but yet there's a loving God in heaven that says, I forgive you. Amen. That ought to bring the most joy of your life. And then the last part I wrote this, to know that we have the gift of eternal life with the Father, and it has been given to us. That's what brings full joy. Yeah. I don't know how you're going to take this. I don't know how you're going to take this message and what I just said. I'll be honest with you. For once, I really hope, and I hate to watch myself on Facebook. I tell people, they ask me sometimes, you watch your message on Facebook? I know. I think if I watch a message on Facebook, I'd quit preaching. <laughs> it's about like me watching myself sing sometimes. I didn't ever sing again. Sometimes I need to watch myself sing, so I'll quit singing probably, but... You and I have been put here on this earth at this particular time, in this particular place, for a particular reason. And you and I need to know who God is, interact with God, and really start being godly. I'm going to hopefully, Lord willing, if God doesn't change my mind or my path, I'm going to continue to look at 1 John. 
And then we'll go from there. I believe with all my heart that if you will stick with me on Wednesday nights, as we're going to do this on Wednesday nights, I believe with all my heart that if you will stick with me through these lessons, if you will, studying, seeking God in these verses, I believe it will transform our lives. And I don't care if you've been saved most of your life or you got saved yesterday or you're not saved at all. I believe it will speak to every soul and everybody. But if we're going to sit with like, knots on the logs and not try to change or not want to change anything or not want to be transformed by God's mercy, then I can tell you, I can promise you without a doubt that you will not be changed and you will go out and you will do your thing, but there will be a payday someday. I don't want you to pay. I'm talking to you throughout these lessons and through my, on my life. I t promise you, I'm speaking to you out of the most love that I possibly could have for any human beings. I care about you, love you, and I think you're precious. You are the truly the apple of my eye. God has put a sincere love for you to me, in me. And I am thrilled each and every day, some days more than others, that I'm your pastor. Some days, you know, I need prayer too. But I want us to see us draw closer to God. I want us to feel God. I want us to know God. I want people to sit on this property and as soon as they stand here in a church service or out of a church, I want them to feel the power of God. I am not interested in one bit of fluff. I'm not interested in trying to make people feel good to make people feel good. I want you to feel good. But I believe if you're right with Jesus and Jesus is right with you, you're going to feel great. Amen. But if you're sitting here and you're not right with Jesus and Jesus is not right with you, then I pray to God that conviction will fall heavy on your soul and that he will make it real to you right now where you can't sleep tonight. If you die with that and you don't take care of it, then you will die and go to hell. Period. And you too amazing to go to hell. And God paid too high of a price for that to be your end. Get to know God. Let God get to know you better. You and him do some talking. I pray that we'll see a great transformation in our church because the power of God will be here because you brought it. Amen. 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 Are you with me? Amen. Father, our Heavenly Father, thank you. Thank you for your infinite mercy and grace. Thank you for loving us enough that you're willing to send your only begotten Son that we might have the hope and the pleasure and the promise of eternal life. Thank you for every individual that's here this evening, everyone within the sound of my voice. God, I ask that you be with us, keep us safe. But Lord, we're asking that your great interaction will be among us throughout the week. Communicate to our hearts and our minds and our spirits, and Lord, help us to communicate to you. Help us to be more who we should be, drawing closer to you every day, showing our love to others and also to you. God, we need you today. In this most desperate and divided world that's demolished day by day by the sins of humanity. We're asking God that you might put a hedge around each family, each marriage, each, each, each 
uh, workplace, Lord, that we're in. Help us, Father, to feel the power that's around us. We know the devil's waging high for our souls, and Lord, we're asking that you might touch us to the very core of who we are. God, we need you tonight. And we thank you for what's about to happen. We thank you for the transforming power of your Holy Spirit that's going to move us to heavenly places. Thank you for the, for the honesty that you have given us, Lord. And thank you, Lord, most of all for that wonderful gift of heaven one day. We ask God that you continue to be with us now as we depart from this place, but never depart from your presence. We praise you with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength, for you are God and you are worthy of all honor and praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Please don't forget, on <coughs> Sunday we are going to have our service at 11 o'clock. We're going to have a service similar to what we had last, week, last Sunday. It'll be 11 to 12-ish. I don't really, I want a hand clap for once I want a hand clap. I done good. I looked at my watch after it was over, back 12.05, I thought. I pat my reach back and patted on myself. I can show Charlene, because she's sitting there, yeah, we're going to get out of 12, ain't we, sure? <laughs> anyway, so 11, and we'll do 12-ish on Sunday morning, because it is January 1st, kicking the new year off. We want you to be here. Please be here. Bring some folks with you. We had a lot of visitors last Sunday. It's great to have them. Hopefully, Lord willing, they'll be back. Be praying. And I mean that. Don't just be saying, I will okay, pray. Don't, I want you to really pray. Put some time into it. Put some effort in. Put some needs into it. And really seek the heavens so we can see power of God move in this yeah. place. We want to see God this year. Amen? Amen. I can't wait. I'm excited about it. Burn, go ahead. Supernatural. Amen. Amen. I have something that's impressing upon my heart. that I like to read, okay? This being the end of the year, where everybody here may have some of those feelings and thoughts about the fact that we get ready to go into a new year. And I had a nephew yesterday who was calling me and said that he had a rough, tough time throughout this year, 2022. And many people have, they may be lost in the past. But I'd like to say that this is a word of praise and thanksgiving and glory be to God for what I'm saying. And I feel the pressure saying to this text. And I thank you, sir, for your good ministry here. Did you and you bring out the message about what we have seen and touched. I have seen and touched. And you all have touched my heart and my people that I know. Get down to the point of what I want to say. Praise the Lord. Appreciate you. Remember all of the, all of that furniture and stuff that you all got <coughs> this family that was over here and loaded my garage up there. Now that's the cat come out of the garage now because I can't get my car. <laughs> During this cold weather, I didn't get a couple of jumps. Just a few days ago, I was passing by here and I stopped in the church parking lot right there. And was on the phone. I had to start my car up, it wouldn't start, so I had to get a jump. I called Brother Mike there up, and he couldn't help me. The Lord sent a young man with his wife and a car and a few minutes to get this jump. Praise the Lord. Amen. Then another thing, but it was getting done now. But anyway, part of that, what I'd like to say is this here read the scripture. This is in the 34th chapter of Psalm and the 6th verse. It says, This man cried, and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all his trouble. Mm -hmm. This man cried. Yeah. Now, that young lady, friend of mine, is that family. <clears throat> She called me after Christmas and it was the joy yeah. that her sister had came over to see her for Christmas. 
they have missed many holidays and no one cared for some. So she told me that she and her sister cried throughout the day. Her sister was heavy because her companion, which was a friend of mine also, died this year. After he retired, three months, man, he retired, so he ain't gonna work for nothing else. But, but the Lord suffered him to die. At about 62 years old, he was the greatest thing. And she, she missed him so much. She missed him, she was very happy because she missed her companion. And she cried with her sister, both of them. Now, Brother Mike, right here, went to her house with me about two weeks ago. And he prayed for that family, that house. He prayed for the front door and the back. Praise the Lord. And she gave her testimony and told me that the Lord answered her prayer. Amen. And blessed that house. And she appreciated us. Mm. She appreciated me. And she gave me so many compliments that I said I refused to cry. <laughs> okay. Give God all the glory and the praise. Amen. Amen. But whatever I do or say, I don't take God get the glory. Yeah. Because I can't, Jesus said we can't do nothing without him. Amen. Amen. So by his love and his mercy, if we abide in him, he said we can ask what to who will and it shall be done. Mm -hmm. So some of these things is how we get to know God. So we sin more. That's right. And he, and he works and blesses us in our life. We get to be children. Amen. That's right. So thank you all. And I'll be share that. Peace, my spirit, because it's heavy on me. All right. God bless you, brother. I heard you saying in your message how you cry. Mm. Okay, when you cry, this man cried and the Lord heard. That's that. right. And I'm going to tell you something personal. When he showed me about that, I'll share this talk with you. And us being human, we have emotional feelings, we have physical, mm -hmm. mental, psychological feelings. Mm -hmm. And some and the Lord one time I said, the Lord, why are my feelings so, so bad? Like you said, why don't you enjoy it? Mm -hmm. That's part of my human. Mm -hmm. We grow within. We want to be delivered from these bodies. Mm -hmm. But we have a treasure within. That treasure is within our soul, within our heart. That's right. So we got to suffer these things while we're here on earth. And God we, bless and, you, brother. And, and, and some people say, well, you can't carry nothing with you. The lady told me to push this here. I'm carrying that with me. <laughs> See, what you gonna, we're going to carry with me. We're going to lay up treasures in heaven. That's right. And not on earth. Yeah. That's what we're going to live. We're going to carry that to heaven with. But these material things, we're going to leave them right here. They ain't going to be <laughs> worth anything. Sister, Sister Bellis, do you have something okay. on it? Yeah. The Bible says for us to bear one another's burden. Mm -hmm. so I know you're heavy, laden, and that you have a lot on your plate. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. As a unit, we don't pray out loud. We're not afraid to pray. No. We're right here. Okay. It's a case of a little old age, I guess. <laughs> God bless each and every one of you. Please be safe going home. Come back Sunday morning, 11 o'clock. We'll see you there.